everybody. My name is Dr. Francois Tessier. I'm the CEO of the Center for Complementary Therapy and Pain Management in Sri Lanka. Good day. And welcome to this series of uh, Zoom interview where you discover the most amazing doctors and therapists practicing complementary therapies worldwide. And today it's not an exception. We have an amazing, amazing guest. Uh, today we are going to meet Dr. Lily Rahman, gemologist, Usui Tibetan Reiki master, certified hypnosis teacher, certified spa therapist, quantum touch certified instructors, and on and on, etc., etc. Her journey is just incredible. Uh, Dr. Lily uh, was born in Bangkok, Thailand, and uh, she was introduced to gemstone at a very early uh, age because her father was the owner of a ruby mine, a gemstone cutting factory and jewelry store, uh, a gemstone mining area in Thailand. So Dr. Lily uh, was born literally into a crystal environment, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Dr. Lily attended the Asian Institute of Gemological Science in Bangkok, where she graduated as a gemologist. And she taught and worked at the Institute of Gems Identification Laboratory for a couple of years, where she acquired a valuable experience and knowledge about the gems. Lily discovered later after the healing power of crystal and gemstone during her creative process. Uh, her interest in self-healing brought her to become an accomplished Uzui Tibetan Reiki master. And after that, she became a certified quantum touch instructor. Lily has taught self-healing techniques to many, many people in Canada and in Thailand and everywhere in Asia also, where she worked with autistic children. She, um, she is a certified hypnosis instructor also, as she studied with the world famous Banyan Hypno Hypnosis Institute in Los Angeles, California. Lily is also interested in natural health issues since a long time, not only in what we eat, but how we detox our body. She studied and read, uh, read about the detoxification and taught these studies, and she, she became a spa therapist. Lily helped many, many, many people with a psychological, emotional problem along her journey. So, well, you know, Lily, I could continue on and on and on because you have so much. First of all, I would like to say welcome and thank you so much for being here with us today, sharing your knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Right. Okay, so we will jump in our questions. Uh, yes. Lily, Dr. Lily, your profile showed that you were navigating through many different sectors, okay? You started from gemstone, jewelry designer, to crystal healing, to spa therapist, to hypnosis, energy healing, and as I know you, you have a great knowledge in essential oil and herbs. You went from Thailand to California, and to many places in Asia, you cross the world. I would like you to summarize in your own word, your journey, because your journey is the basic of who you are. Please tell us about your journey first. Yeah, well, it's, it seemed long, but actually it's not a long journey. Uh, the first thing that is always because of my, the parents, my father, I was born in Thailand, and Thailand is, you know, the woman, you don't do anything, the boy go out and play. But my father is different way. He said, you do what you want, you be what you want, and anything you want it to be, you can be it. So for that reason, I heard this out all the times. So I start to, you know, learn. I just keep learning and learning, and I find that it was, uh, make a big difference for the knowledge that you start when you're very young with the big support of the parents. So for that reason, I, I become free. So I don't have to think so much about oh, what I'm going to be when I'm growing up because I have so many fruit in my basket. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so we just as gemology itself is already open up the world for inside. I don't look at the stone as how beautiful they are, but it just inside is even like um, if you have chance to see from the microscope, you will see that is another most beautiful. World. It's just like you look up at the sky that you see all kind of the star, but as the same. Yeah, and it's also you feel. Why, when you get angry, why you want to hold the stone, and when you get sad, why you want to hold the stone, or uh, when you really uh, missing someone, why you have to touch the stone? You know, is that was is all about the vibration. But so yeah, that you, like it was, not your first approach. it was not your first approach when you started to work with crystal. You were working as a scientific gemologist. Yes, when did yes. it happen? Tell me about when it switched from pure gemology to this aspect of the, the stones and crystals. Actually, it, 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 it was the, most of the time it go along all the way together. Because when I was very young, you know, the, the ruby for me, it's just a rock. It's not a big thing because he, he will come home with a whole by kilo this is the raw crystal so the rest that the color is off a little bit you just let the guy you know okay tell the gardener put in the soil or put it in the fish tank and i was always enjoyed to see the very red color in the fish tank and we have five five or six of the fish tank and a few of them that is have very little or some we have none so i can see that the one that with a lot of ruby that fish is getting big and they look happy and they swim all the time. The one that doesn't have any ruby is many times they would die, you know, like sink on the bottom. And that would, I just remember. And so anytime you want them to be, you know, have more active, I see that a lot of ruby in there. So I ask my father, hey, try to put more ruby into that one. I don't think it's just a ruby. I think it's any crystal, uh, crystalline, like quartz or anything it would be the same. Yeah, what by doing to become a gemologist, I, I find that was, uh, it's a lot of things out there that uh, people misuse. Uh, you know, like you have to, everybody want diamond, diamond all the time, but other stone is more precious, more than diamond. I never have diamond in my life. Yeah, but you, so it started with the ruby. And yeah, it's is that you, the ruby. You jumped to other type of crystals, and then I guess yeah. that you deepen your uh, uh, your understanding of the healing power. Uh, tell me about that journey. How did it come to you? Because it started. It's interesting about the, the fish tank mm. example is interesting, but how did you continue that journey? Well, because when when uh, later on in life, I think about uh, twenty years, twenty five years ago, I start to make my own jewelry. Uh, we, we, I start to, you know, send to be a contest in a jewelry show, in a jury, international jewelry show in Thailand, in Japan, in Hong Kong. And uh, we start to win different, like a new artist. So I enjoyed it. And the more I start to work with them, I start to feel something different for myself that uh, the collection like this today is a lot of things is blue and turquoise. And, uh, and, and I realized that because that day I have a migraine. And any time that when I have migraine and headache, a very heavy head, I will reach out for the, uh, you know, the lapis lazuli color or aquamarine color or turquoise color. So, and if when you really so tired again, I said, I don't know why I start to work with Ruby. It just for my notice way, and especially I always often have the migraine when I was very young. So with uh, sapphire, with lapis lazuli, all these things, when you start to work with it, it's in your environment and my hand touching them all the time because I'm making jewelry. Yeah. And I find I forgot to take the medicine. The pain is start to subside. It's not all 100%, but it's comfortable enough for me to move on the whole day without, you know, have to...